do have this second radial arm saw. This one is set up with a dado blade, and a dado blade is a blade with several stacked blades that create a notch or channel in the wood. It's much the same as the other radial arm saws. All the features are pretty much the same. It comes forward and back. It has a height adjustment here. You need to loosen up the main arm here so it can go up and down, and that requires loosening up a couple of bolts. I'm pretty sure it's set up to do three quarter inch dados and in a piece of three quarter inch material. Remember with uh, radial arm saws, the travel of the blade should never come off the end, uh, edge of the table. And when I first got here, this table was too small to be safe. So we extended the table. That's why the table was so long. Looking at the saw from the side, and from the back. So while the other saw has a spring mechanism that pulls it back, this one doesn't have a spring net mechanism, and uh, someone has manufactured this cord with a weight that pulls it back. The weight could be a little bit heavier. The spring action, if there was a proper spring action, it would be a little bit uh, easier to use, but the weight does the job of returning it. It doesn't return it too quickly. It does need to be that long so that it can come all the way up for full extension. Start and stop are down below. Start is the top button, stop is the bottom button. This is a three-phase machine. It has to plug into one of the special three-phase outlets on the wall. It won't plug into 110 electricity. This one does take a long time for the blade to spin down, and that uh, you just have to wait for it. It takes a minute or two. And as with all the tools, you should never walk away from them while the blade is spinning. And you should never reach in and grab material out of there while it's spinning. You may not have noticed on the video, but as I pulled this forward, it wanted to launch out at me more aggressively than the 14 inch uh, original saw brand, the bigger, bigger machine. And that's because it has a lot of force with the blade and this is a smaller machine and the motor head doesn't weigh as much. It has a lot of force that can come out and, and launch at us. You just have to be, again, you're pulling out and you're also ready to push back in at the same time as needed. These are our two dado cuts. A dado is a groove that goes partway through the wood and is in the middle. When it's on the end, it's called a rabbit cut, and the rabbit is R-A-B-B-E-T, not like the little animal rabbit. This is a rabbit cut. These two are dado cuts. Dado, dado, rabbit. And if we cut this right, this should fit in there. It's a little bit big. It's a little bit big, but probably I need a little bit of clearance. I don't want it to be too perfectly uh, smooth. And it's a little bit big, but the plywood is actually slightly less than three quarters of an inch because they're, they're like a sixteenth of an inch shy of 
uh, three quarters of an inch. That's how it's manufactured these days. It's handy if you're doing a lot of carpentry work and cabinetry work to have a second radial arm saw that's set up with the dado blade. You don't have to change the blade on the, on the radial arm saw. You don't have to change the blade on a table saw. You can have it all set up to go. And if you're building shelves, this is a great way to build shelves and have the shelves fit in and have it be a, it's a very strong joint. So this is a really good joint to do. You can also do this with a router. It requires a little more setup. And you can also run these through the table saw and do one pass at a time with your blade and make a multiple cuts. It's not going to be as clean with, as with a proper dado blade. I've just installed this retrofit aftermarket guard. If you're using it in a work environment where there's multiple people using it, your employer has an obligation to have every safety device installed on the machine. This is a required safety device on a radial arm saw. Even though this is a late 1950s model, some of these didn't come with guards or proper guards at the time. It wasn't a requirement and an expectation. We're using it now in 2021, and we need to make sure the shop environment has every safety feature attached to the machines, and especially in the academic environment, students are using these and they need to have every safety device attached to them. What you do with your own machine in your own shop, at home or in private is up to you, but if you are working in an environment that's a production shop, and you're employing people or you're having multiple people use it, you probably need to get your guards retrofitted and outfitted and everything up to safety standards. I've also attached this spring-loaded return device. This is also current safety requirement of your radial arm saw. Even if it's not part of the original manufacturer's specifications from 1957 or 58, whenever this model was built, I have an obligation to do something to mitigate the launch or the crawl or the kickback of the machine, especially with the dado blade that I have attached to this. There's still a shop out there servicing these 70 year old machines. It used to be Wolf Machinery until about 2016. They were specializing in reconditioning and servicing the DeWalt radial arm saw of this model and uh, nearby generations, earlier models and slightly later models. They are based in the Midwest or were. They closed for business in 2016, but I found that I could buy this and the guard retrofit items from Bradley Tools in Iowa. They also service the machines themselves and have other, some of the parts available, but I'm a little bit far away from Iowa being in Southern California near Los Angeles, so uh, they're not gonna come and service my machine. But I was able to get this part, bring it up to safety code, and I was able to get the guard and bring that up to safety code, and we're gonna be good to go soon. I've got a little bit of cord abrasion here and cord abrasion here. I need to do some electrical work uh, to bring that up to code and safety standards, but we're getting better. I'm also building this better table, bigger table. The table that was just sized to the metal frame unit was not big enough to handle most of the pieces I'm trying to work. I'm doing small cabinetry work, 42 inch high counter, for uh, the tools in the, in the tool room, and it just can't maneuver the pieces left and right, so I needed, to be, needed, I needed to have a wider table to provide support for my panels. And it was time to, you know, tune it up a little bit. It wasn't cutting straight. I did a bunch of the fine tuning of it. I leveled the table, um, built a new fence, a new table, a bigger table. Um, I'm going to add some trim here to make it a little bit more beautiful. And other than that, it's an active, happy thing now. The blade is cutting true. It's not going at an angle. And uh, I even did a little bit of bearing work and uh, tightened up my bearings a little bit. They hadn't been serviced in a long time. It was a little loosey-goosey. And uh, having that less loosey-goosey action should help me control it better and prevent it from uh, launching and crawling at me. If you find one of these, 
you should buy it and service it and get it up and running because these are the granddaddy of the, all the radial arm saws and they're a workhorse. Even at the nine inch blade, some of them don't have as much power as some of the bigger blades. This is particularly a three phase model, so that helps uh, offset some of the power issues of some of the 220 models. And uh, it does very well. It's, it was probably one of the first tools bought here in the shop uh, when the theater was opened in the, in the 1950s. And uh, it's been around since, and it's still in good use, and it's not in any danger of dying anytime soon. So find one, if you can find one for a couple hundred bucks, that's a steal. When they're refurbished, they could be $1,000, $1,500 or more. So get one of these. They just uh, don't make them like that anymore. And the other thing that I learned is my original saw is actually a direct descendant of DeWalt. DeWalt was the original manufacturer of the radial arm saw, and this is one of the earliest generations of it and the earliest iterations. And when they stopped making them after the market got flooded by all of the home consumer craftsman brands, which weren't built as well, they stopped making them for several years and then uh, Original Saw eventually bought the patent, designs and everything, and used that to make their current uh, round of radial arm saws and our big 14 inch saw behind me um, is the original saw. So it's actually a relative of this old granddaddy. So that's kind of a, an interesting piece of, uh, of information and kind of fun that, uh, you know, the two saws are related. I've just put on a new dado blade, one that has a negative degree rake on the teeth, and this should run much better in the radial arm saw than the previous one. The previous one had a very positive degree rake on the teeth, and it was really launching at me quite aggressively. Let's give this one a try and see what happens.
still having trouble keeping it from launching at me. It is still trying to crawl forward, and that's just endemic to the many teeth and the width of the dado blade. And the dado blade is set up to be three quarters of an inch, and it's just got a lot of teeth biting and a lot chewing a lot of wood, and it's launching forward. It's not as bad as the uh, table saw blade that was on it, but it still needs some bit of control and maneuvering. I do need to continue to give it pressure backwards as I'm pulling it forwards in order to prevent it from launching out at me. Even with the new spring return, it's still wanting to launch. So that's just because it's a dado blade. If it was a regular uh, nine inch blade on this machine, this machine only takes nine inch blades. This is a 1950s, late 1950s model. And uh, if I was just using a single blade on it, it probably isn't going to launch out at me uh, as aggressively, if at all, especially if I'm using a blade with negative degree rake on the teeth. Mm -hmm.